Welcome to the Biological Life Sciences channel. Today we are going to see chemical properties and the nature of DNA and its structural properties also. Let's start with the components of DNA. DNA is having three major components that is nitrogenous bases, ribose sugar and phosphate group. The ribose sugar present in the DNA is a pentameric sugar and the nitrogenous base is added to the number 1 carbon and the phosphate group is attached to the carbon number 5th. Let's see the constituent of nucleotides of DNA. When the ribose sugar is added with the nitrogenous base, it is called nucleoside. Example, when adenine is added to ribose sugar, it is adenosine. When adenine is added with deoxyribose sugar, it is adenosine, deoxyadenosine. When the phosphate group is added to the nucleoside, it becomes nucleotide. Example, if single phosphate, phosphate is added, then it becomes deoxyadenosine monophosphate. If two phosphorus group is added, it is deoxyadenosine diphosphate. And if three phosphorus group is added, it is deoxyadenosine triphosphate. Let's see the basic difference in the DNA and RNA structure. In case of RNA, at the second position, there is a presence of OH group which is absent in case of DNA. So therefore that sugar is called deoxyribose sugar and the uh, first sugar that is called ribose sugar in case of RNA. The other difference is the presence of thiamine in case of DNA and presence of uracil in case of RNA and rest other bases remains the same. Let's see the nitrogenous bases. There are total five nitrogenous bases and they are divided into two groups. First is pyrimidines and second is purines. The pyrimidines is a six membered ring. It has three bases that is thiamine, cytosine and uracil. Purine is made up of six membered ring that is fused to a five membered ring, namely adenine and guanine. These rings are not only having carbon, but also they have nitrogen in their structure. You can see here it's a six membered ring and in case of purine, it is attached with a five membered ring. Let's see nitrogenous basis structure. This is the parent structure of purine to which when addition is done, it forms the respective basis. For example, in case of purine parent structure, when amine group is added at the sixth carbon, it becomes adenine. And when amine group is added at the second carbon and oxygen is added at the carbon number five, it becomes carbon number six, it becomes guanine. In case of pyrimidine, this is the parent structure of pyrimidine. When carbon number 4 is added with the amine group, it becomes cytosine. When fourth carbon and second carbon is added with oxygen, it becomes uracil. And when this uracil is added with the methyl group at fifth position, it becomes thiamine. That is 5 methyl uracil is thiamine. Let's see how the single strand of DNA looks like. This is the single strand of DNA having all four bases attached to the ribose sugar, deoxyribose sugar plus phosphate group. Here, this linkage between the three prime hydroxyl group and five prime phosphate group is called phosphodiester linkage, which is the backbone of the DNA. And here, the nitrogenous bases are attached to the carbon number one. And the single stranded DNA looks like this. Let's see the double stranded DNA. These are the two strands of DNA that are anti-parallel to one another. Here the nitrogenous base forms the hydrogen bond in the between and guanine and cytosine is forming three hydrogen bonds whereas adenine and thiamine forms two hydrogen bonds and this is the sugar phosphate backbone of both strands and this strands double helix is formed. How compact is this DNA? DNA is very compactly arranged into the cell. In, it is highly condensed form is called chromosomes and which has two chromatids to it. It has two coils in each chromatids and each coil consists of 30 rosettes. In that rosettes, one rosettes is having six loops and one loop is approximately having 75,000 base pairs which is 30 nanometer thick fiber and when it is further straightened, it looks like a bid on a string form of chromatin. Exact 
it looks like this where the DNA is wrapped around a histone core of nucleosome and these nucleosomes is connected like this and it looks like bits on a string. Let's see the structure of nucleosomes in a bit details. Nucleosomes are basic unit of chromatin organization and in eukaryotes DNA is associated with proteins that are these histone proteins. But in eukaryote DNA is naked and it is in nucleoid form which is dispersed in the cytoplasm and is connected somewhere at the cell membrane. The nucleosome is a basic bead like structure that is repeated along with the chromatin. It is made of the uh, made with the segment of DNA that is wounded around the protein core that is composed of two copies of each type of histones. So it forms a histone octamer and DNA is wrapped twice around it. And there is a presence of linker DNA that connects the two histone. The DNA here is negatively charged because of the presence of phosphate group and the protein is positively charged having basic amino acids. So therefore they are electromagnetically attracted towards each other. This is exactly the histonucleosome structure looks like having the histone proteins. There are around 5 types of histone proteins. The histone octamer is formed by 4 proteins that is H2A, H2B, H3 and H4. These 4 histone proteins are dimeric in nature hence form an octamer and the DNA is wrapped around this octamer. The H1 protein is acting as a clip here which uh, wraps the DNA around the nucleosome and then it forms the linker DNA which is connected to the next histone and this arrangement is repeated repeated over and again and it forms a solenoid structure of DNA. Let's see the different forms of DNA that is double helix. There are three major forms that is BDNA, ADNA and ZDNA. Let's see all these forms in details. ADNA first. It is a right handed helix. It is more wider and flatter than BDNA. It is approximately having 11 base pairs per turn. Its bases are tilted away from main, main axis of the molecule. It is having narrow deep major grooves and broad shallow minor grooves. This type of helix is observed when less water is present in the cell that is cell is in dehydrating condition. ADNA has been observed in two situations or two contexts. It is present in active site of DNA polymerase. The length of ADNA there is approximately 3 base pairs. And it is also found in gram positive bacteria that are undergoing sporulations. Let's see BDNA. It is biologically the most common DNA which is present in all cells. It is a right handed helix that is clockwise rotating and forms a spiral. The complementary base pairing AT and GC is universal for all, all the DNA. It is ideal DNA having 10 base pairs per turn for a 360 degree rotation of the helix. And here each base is twisted 36 degree relative to the adjacent bases. The base pairs are around 0.34 nanometers apart. So the complete rotation of the molecule is about 3.4 nanometer and the axis of the helix right passes right through the middle of the each base pair. Let's see the ZDNA. It is a left handed helix and it is generally seen in high salt concentration conditions. In this the sugar phosphate back, uh, forms a backbone that is zigzag back and forth giving rise to the name that is ZDNA Z for zigzag. It is ha having 12 base pairs per turn a deep minor groove but no major groove. It is forming parts of some active genes therefore it is suggested that ZDNA may play a vital role in gene expressions. Let's see it at a glance. Here this table shows you the nature of the DNA in different parameters. The helix A and B DNA are right handed whereas ZDNA is a left handed helix. In a DNA there is around 11 base pairs per turn. For B it is approximately 10, 10.5 and for Z it is 12. Helical diameter for A is 2.6, for B it is 2 and for Z it is 1.8 nanometer. And the length of the helix is 2.6 nanometer, B 3.4 nanometer and for Z it is 3.7 nanometer. The shape is broadest in case of A. 
it is intermediate that is for b and narrowest for z the major grooves in case of a dna is wide deep whereas b dna it is narrow deep and for z it is flat the minor grooves for a dna it is narrow shallow for b it is broad shallow and for z it is narrow deep these are the this is how the different forms of dna looks like let us see the effects of acid on dna ph lowers then one results in the breakage of phosphodiester bond between the nucleotides and breakage of n glycosidic bond between the sugar and the bases means the two bases is connected with the phosphodiester bond and that bond will be broken when dna is subjected to acidic condition plus there is a bond that is n glycosidic bond present between the ribose sugar and the nitrogen base that will also be broken the ph around 4 results in the selective breakage of n glycosidic bond that is between sugar and purines dna treated in this way will be called as a purinic acid since the purine has been removed means from the dna base the adenine or guanine will be removed and it is called a purinic acid let's see the effect of base base tends to change the polarity of the groups involved in the hydrogen bonding above ph 11.5 or 11.3 all hydrogen bonds are disrupted and dna is totally denatured DNA is resistant to hydrolysis to about pH 13 unless it is a purinic then it is hydrolyzed and RNA is hydrolyzed into ribonucleotide around pH 11 let's see other chemical properties first that is ionic property the phosphates of DNA that is sugar phosphate backbone are negatively charged due to the presence of phosphate group so like charges repel each other the DNA in distilled water will spontaneously denature into single-stranded DNA when it is kept for a longer time. The salt that, that dissociates into iron will neutralize the charge on the phosphate groups and the salt will stabilize the DNA double helix resulting in higher TN. The GC content, variation of the GC content, most higher organisms have higher GC content of about 0.5 for pyramids lower organi organisms range widely from 0 0.27 to 0 0.76 for some bacteria so the gc content is responsible for increase in melting temperature of the dna therefore the dna melting temperature will be higher if gc content will be more let's see the solubility the dna is not having the 2 prime oh group as in case of ribose sugar that is rna so therefore RNA is more readily soluble than DNA. The hydroxyl groups are polar and dissolves in water better. The CH is a non-polar bond and therefore hydrophobic. So RNA dissolves more in uh, polar solvents than DNA. But due to the presence of extra OH group in RNA, it becomes more reactive and is less stable than DNA. The hydroxyl group on 2 prime carbon of ribose sugar is more reactive the hydrogen found in deoxyribose sugar hence dna is more stable and is likely to be the genetic material in most of the species than rna if you like the video please share comment and subscribe and press the bell icon for further videos thank you so much and if you want to go through the previous video, the link will be given on the i button.